since we don't really know for sure the value of any of the variables we're looking at in a cost-benefit analysis, we need to dig a little deeper and account for uncertainty and risk. Since you were last here, I just tweaked a few things to make the net present value positive, and I got rid of the financial analysis here just so we have less to look at. I also added a benefits delayed option, kind of like the fishing has been delayed or something. This doesn't really make any sense for the project we're looking at, and the way I set it up doesn't even make a lot of sense mathematically, so I'm not even going to show you how I did it. But it's sort of like if this was a construction project, and construction has gone on longer than expected and the benefits have been delayed. Which is bad because then you'll have to be discounting each benefit another year into the future, which lowers the total benefits. Okay, so we don't know if any of these things are going to be the same next year or in five years. In the face of uncertainty, there is something we can do very easily here without any additional information, that is sensitivity testing. It's just changing these variables to see how much the net present value changes with them. So we can sit here and play with the numbers and see what happens to the net present value, but that'll take forever. So instead in Excel here we can build a sensitivity table, which will basically just show how the net present value is changing with the variable. So let's say we want to do that for wage. We make a column with all the wages we want to test. So let's start with $4,500 a year and just see what happens to the net present value as we increase it by $100 per year. Instead of typing this all out, we can go over to Home and go to Fill and go to Series. And here it's already detected the step value that we want. Or we can set this to growth and whatever. Okay, so that's for the column, and then along the row we're going to put all the equations that we want to test. So we can copy and paste the equation for net present value. I already set this up with number signs so we don't have to worry about it changing. Okay, and we highlight the values of the table. And go over to data, and what if analysis. And we build a data table. So we're going to ignore the row input cell for now and just go over to column. And we select the wage cell. So basically what this is going to be doing is saying for the equation up here, instead of using the value in the cell we're picking, it's going to be using these values. And press OK. And there we can see over at 5000 it's got the same number as the original net present value, and all the other ones have been calculated. At somewhere between $5,700 a year and $5,800 a year to our workers, we'll make our project switch from viable to inviable. Maybe we could amend this table to show more of the negative. I just sort of chose numbers at random above and below the original assumption. Where you test is up to you. The point of the sensitivity testing is simply to show how much the net present value changes as this other value changes. This here is a one variable table, but maybe we want to show how two variables change at the same time. For example, the price and the amount of fish sold. It depends just how elastic the demand curve is, but if the price increases, people will buy less. So maybe we want to test these variables together in the same table. So for that, just like before, we're going to set up a column with one of the variables. We'll test the change in the fish price against the amount of fish caught. We can assume we know the fish price. That's just the price this year. We're assuming it's increasing, we just don't know by how much. We'll test by 0.5% to 1.5%, let's say. And for fish caught, let's just test from 2,000 pounds to 3,000 pounds in 100 pound increments. Oh, it didn't make it all the way. Whatever. So Excel is going to look for the equation in the top left cell. So we'll copy and paste the equation for the net present value to there. Okay, highlight the whole table. Go to what if analysis, data table. So this time we have a row input cell. So for that we're going to be selecting the amount of fish caught value. And for column, the change in the fish price. Okay, now we have a table comparing the amount of fish to the price.
so from here we can sort of see that the project isn't super sensitive to the change in the fish price as much as it is to the amount of fish sold. I think. I think we can I think we can say that. What makes me say that is that it isn't until down here somewhere at more dramatic price increases that the project becomes positive again, while every hundred pounds of a change in the fish catch seems to have more of an impact. But again, I picked the scale of change of these two variables at random, so I don't know. We could probably go on to make three, four, and five variable tables, or series of tables, or books of tables, but it's going to start getting messy, and I, I think this is messy enough. I don't know what I'm looking at here. I mean, it's not going to matter how pretty I make this or what colors I add to it. This is really just going to be annoying to digest. Something a bit easier to read is to make a table of the switching values. A switching value is, for example, how much do the operating costs have to change for the net present value to become zero, or how much does the amount of fish caught have to decrease for the net present value to become zero. It's just the value at which these variables have to change before the project's net present value becomes zero. So we could just play with these numbers till we get what we want, but that would take forever. In Excel we can do a what if analysis again. Go up to data, what if analysis, and this time we go to goal seek. So we want to set this cell to zero by changing the operations costs. And when we press OK, it's going to play with the operations costs for us and automatically change this number to the number that makes the net present value zero. So we'll just remember that number and press cancel and type it in. So do it again for wage, net present value to zero by changing the wage. And if the wage becomes $5,766 a year, then it makes our net present value zero. So we'll just type that in. Oh, I pressed OK and it changed it. There might be a more elegant way to create a table like this, but I'm just going to do it this way. So we'll do it again, and I'll just fast forward the rest of them. Okay, so the way we want to present this is by what percent has the original value changed to make the net present value zero? So if we look at this equation for the relationship between these two values, this is just the old number changing by some percent to become the new number. We want to solve for x. So we go badoop, badoop, badoop. And this is the equation we'll put into Excel. So it's just the value where the net present value equals zero divided by the original value minus 100%. So what this is showing is that if our original assumption of $2,000 operations cost per year increases by 77%, then our net present value is going to become zero. To visualize that equation we used, we're finding the proportionate amount that the new number is of the old number, okay, then subtracting 100%, so that rather than saying this new number is 177% of the old number, we can say it increased by 77%. If the wage we paid increased by 15%, then the net present value would be zero. Or if the pollution cost increased by 153%, then our net present value would be zero. Here you can't divide by zero. An 8% decrease in fish caught would be bad. Minus 400% in the way our fish price is changing. Or a 770% decrease in the residual value of the boat. Okay, so looking at this, it looks like our project is very sensitive to a wage increase, and even more by the amount of fish caught. A decrease of 8% in the amount of fish we catch is going to make our project unprofitable. Then we can go on to organize this table from the most sensitive variables to the least sensitive if we want. But these variables aren't really directly comparable to one another. A 10% change in the operations cost is going to mean something completely different than a 10% change in the amount of fish caught. So another nice thing to include is just the absolute value changes. And I already set this up and I hit it over here. And there, now we can see the absolute value changes. And the number of years the benefits have been delayed makes sense now. The percent is still fine, and I think it's actually the preferred format, but it's just really important to pay attention to what's actually changing and what the units are. Okay, so this is all very fine and good, but we're not really using any new information. We're just sort of playing around with the numbers. It's all very subjective. What these numbers mean to us depends entirely on what information we, the analyst, is bringing to it. I'm no fisherman. This looks like it might be very sensitive, but is this change in fish catch realistic? I mean, it probably is here. 2,500 pounds a year? If they're catching small three pound fish, fishing six days a week, that's around one to two fish per fisherman per day. That's like not even enough for lunch. But 
by how much can the operating costs change? And what is the probability of the operating costs changing? Maybe an experienced fisherman who did this every day could just look at this and this is all the information they would need for a small simple fishing operation like this. They know what the catch usually is, they know what the price is probably going to be, and they'll be able to feel what the chance of this project going well is. But for non-experienced fishermen, or for much bigger, more complicated projects, we're going to want to conduct a risk analysis, run some statistics, and get something more concrete. In the next video, we'll look quickly at all the steps involved in building the probability of what the net present value might be.